What's this thing on? Red light's blinking. All right, let's do this. All right, welcome to the shop. So here's the deal. I have been wanting this model for literally about 20 years. Uh, when I was a kid, I fell in love with uh, GBs. Uh, and I fell in love with it just because they're such cool looking airplanes. And uh, certainly the, the Disney movie Rocketeer didn't help. I love that movie. Uh, such good storytelling may not be, you know, the best cinematics or whatever. Anyway, so the point is we now have in our possession a GB and not just any GB. We have the original GB. We have the Great Plains GB. Now, the GB from Great Plains is an R series. If you look up your history and want to learn a little bit more about that, that's one thing. But the R series is uh, a direct descendant of the GBZ. Now, I do have a GBZ already, but I do not have a GBR. So I'm assuming that this is a GBR1 since the R2 had specific modifications, one of them being a slightly different wing format, which included flaps. We're not doing flaps. Uh, we're doing as originally designed. And just for a, a little humor here, um, it's... All right, you ready? No. Uh, it, it just yeah it's 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 as it's as big as me yeah see it's as big as me it's uh, a very big model <clears throat> but it is an art so the fuselage is fiberglass the cowl is fiberglass and there is a vacuum formed uh dummy radial that uh, i'm gonna try to maybe use maybe not uh, I love the GB so much that I may just forget about that dummy radial and do one of my 3D printed ones. So the reason why I'm not sure just yet is because I want to see where the CG lands. Since I'm doing an electric conversion, obviously I'm not going to know where the CG is going to land with what weight and everything being stock. So yeah, we got some work ahead of us. We're gonna get started with it. There's gonna be a lot of time lapses on this. I'm gonna stop here and there to explain my approach and how to do things. Mostly this series is gonna be all about you guys watching how I build, how the workflow goes, and see if you have any questions. Really, I want some community engagement on this. So feel free to drop a comment in below and I will obviously be giving links to different products that I'm gonna be using. I mean, everything on this pretty much stock. Uh, except for the power system. Um, but anyway, let's get started building. All right, so what you just saw me do was uh, just, you know, unpackage the wings. The directions right here uh, are, they tell me that I need to start with the wings. We're gonna start assembling with the ailerons. Uh, and with any ARF, what you really wanna do is remove it from the packaging and you want to use your covering iron again to re-shrink. Okay, so this is a particularly old ARF. And so for the intents and purposes of this, what we're really trying to do is remove any inconsistent pulls in the plastic. So because of heating and cooling and those sort of thermal fluctuations, the, 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 the covering is just not consistent. So what we're trying to do is remove that inconsistency and make it so that it's a more even finish. So when we take it outside into the sunlight and it does heat up uniformly, 
it's not going to create wrinkles or blisters or anything like that. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to get the other wing done and then we're going to come back and go to the next step. Right, one additional thing I really want to note here before I start doing this other wing is uh, this tape. This is just regular masking tape, but it's so old that the adhesive is super, super slimy and greasy and sticky. And they say for you to reattach the ailerons once you're done heating up the covering again, but I'm not going to use this stuff again because as you can see, when you put it on there, it does lift up. The plastic covering so I'm just gonna use some frog tape and uh, what you saw in the time lapse is I've got a little goo gone on a paper towel and that takes the residue right off so let me finish this wing I'll get right back to you Alright, so we have the left wing done. The instructions actually say to do the right wing first, but we have the left wing done now. And I wanted to point out a couple of things. So you saw me with the T-pin in here, and the T-pin just helps you install the hinge in place and have it stay there uh, while you position the control surface. So that's why the T-pin is there. The T-pin is not there to draw in or wick in the CA. The CA does that all on its own just fine. Um, so yeah, I, brought, I have applied my CA glue and my hinges look good. The instructions say specifically, uh, let's see, the gap should be small, just enough to see light through or to slip a piece of paper through. So that's what I did. I used a piece of paper to, and it like barely fits in there. So cool. We're set. We got our gap. Uh, our gap here is roughly an eighth of an inch uh, on both sides. Made sure that they match pretty well. Always be careful of that before you glue. Before, not after. It doesn't work after. All right. So now the next step is to cut out the holes for the aileron servos and for the landing gear and some other things. So I'm gonna get going on that. All right, so uh, we need control horns, right? Yes, control horns are coming up next. And I like to have my supplies ready. I have a stash of lots of little parts that I keep organized. And let's check our situation here. One, two, we at least have two for the ailerons. Three, ooh, four. Oh, we have five. All right, so I'm not, I, I'll have to review again, but uh, one for each aileron, one for each elevator, one for the rudder. Awesome. All right, so I have lots of screws. Uh, I have these screws, I have these screws. Uh, so now what I need to do is I need servos. So servos are down here in the messy servo drawer. Get that out of the way. Now these are calling, it's calling for full size servos. But the beginning of the manual says that you need to have at least 40 ounce inches of torque on each servo. So probably an S3004 would be perfect, but that's a bad one. That's a spare parts one. So these high tech HS 300s, I mean, these are okay standard size servos, but I don't recall the uh, specifications offhand. Uh, same with this tower hobby. So I'm not sure what those torque specifications are. Maybe I'll have to look them up. I want them to match. So it definitely needs to be two of the same. Uh, that's an S3004. That one's not labeled bad. Uh, so that's a 
possibility. Now the other servos I know I have in here. That's not it. That's not it. Oh, that's an S303. Similar to the 304, but not the same. Um, I have these S3102s. That's a JR servo. Uh, yeah, these guys. So the S3102, these are uh, Metal Gear servos, and they're not full size, obviously, because um, they're small. Um, but they do have 51 ounce inches of torque. So they are usually stronger than these standard size uh, servos, you know, just the standard stock ones like the S304, but they're in a smaller package. Um, but not exactly going to fit my hole very well. I'd have to do some sort of adapter, which I really don't want to do. So um, I'm either going to have to keep looking here or rob another plane, which is entirely possible as well. So I'll keep digging and I'll report back. Right, guys so just here at the end of what I can do today uh, neglected to cut out those holes for the servo leads to come through so number 11 blade made quick quick of that uh, I did decide going with the high-tech HS 300s I knew I had some servo horns for them and they uh, met the spec at 42 ounce inches of torque at 4.8 volts since I'll probably be running a five volt, uh, um, a five volt signal from my uh, BEC, this should only go up a little bit. I'm not sure exactly how much, but uh, should be sufficient. Should be sufficient. I'm happy with that. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is this little tool. So you may have seen me use this instead of my big honk and drill. So. Uh, for these little tiny holes, I don't like to use the big drill because number one, it's so heavy, it's easy to get heavy handed and damage something. So I prefer to use this little tool that I picked up years ago. It is a push drill. So because of this spiral thingy and the way that it goes into that slot, when you push down, it drills holes and it's got a spring. See? So, and it goes through pretty, pretty easily too. Um, so that's what I prefer to do on these, these uh, smaller detail kinds of things, just because I don't, I don't have a propensity to be so heavy handed. Well, that's it for today, guys. Um, you know, we've still got to do some control horns on these ailerons and uh, the control rods as well, but that's really all I have time for. We'll move on to that tomorrow. And uh, let's see what else. Uh, we've got to join the wings. Yeah, we got to join wings together <laughs> tomorrow, uh, which means epoxy. So we're going to mix up some epoxy and uh, make a little bit of a mess and we'll get back to it. And in the meantime, I'm going to clean up the shop real quick and go help out my family. See you later, guys, and let's keep going on this flying work of art.